All right, guys, welcome back to the next part in our Rick and Morty app series. In the last part, we went ahead and put together this uh, empty episode detail view controller. We obviously got these cells showing up. And in this part, what we're going to actually focus on is what I keep alluding to, and that is actually caching the prior API response in case we need to reuse it. So before we get into the weeds of things, drop a like down below, say hello in the comments, and let's pick up where we left off. So just to recap, what do I mean by caching a prior response, right? So for example, if I click on uh, Rick here, we aren't actually making another call because we have all the info already, but we are actually making redundant calls for the data down here, right? So maybe we want to save it to core data or maybe we want to write it to disk in SQL or something. So instead of doing that, which is a little heavy, the bare minimum that we could do is let's at least hold it in an in-memory cache, right? So every time we click on Rick, it's a little absurd that we need to load the details for episodes every time. Now, that's a small example, but the larger example here is when we go over to the episodes tab, you know, we're going to want to load in episodes and it's a little redundant and actually it's completely redundant to have to load in this data all over again. So we are going to leverage a new object that I'm going to create in the managers. I'm going to call this RM uh, API cache manager. So we're going to create a new Swift file. This is going to be RM API cache manager. And essentially, this is going to be a class RM API cache manager, and it's basically going to do what the name alludes to, which is manages in uh, memory session scoped API caches. Now, what on earth does that mean? So what that really means is all we really want to go ahead and do is we want to have a way where we can hold a NS cache object in here and check if something is in cache before making an API call. If it is, we can just return the cached object. If it's not, we you know don't need to go ahead and return that object. So uh, rather, if it's not, we need to go ahead and not return that and make the API call, just to be crystal clear. So we have this execute function here in our API service, and what I'm gonna go ahead and do in here is create a instance of that cache manager. We're gonna say cache manager is going to be an RM API service cache manager. We'll just instantiate it. Um, we already have a singleton here for our service, a shared uh, instance. We don't need another one for this. But what we are going to do in here now is jump into this and think about how to go ahead and create some caches. So we're going to create caches uh, pretty simply. So we're going to have a single function. And what we're going to cache by is basically the API URL that we're hitting and then the data that's returned from that URL. So we're going to create a uh, we're going to create a cache. We're going to say private var, and this is going to be a cache, and it's going to be of type ns cache. And we've used this somewhere else before. It's going to be ns string, and the value will be ns data. And essentially, we can just toss everything inside of this cache. Now, if you wanted to be a little more intelligent about this, for example, let's say we wanted to have separate caches for episodes, characters, and locations, we could do that. And you might be wondering, well, why would I want to add that complexity here? We can just use one cache. And the reason we want to do that is because NS, NS cache automatically uh, handles vacating cache on low memory warning. If you handle, uh, if you have multiple NS cache uh, instances, you can actually reduce the amount of stuff that's purged from the cache, right? Conceptually, versus if you only have one cache, it's kind of a black box in terms of what is purged from the cache. So what I'm gonna actually do here is we're gonna create um, different caches based on the endpoints. And we're gonna hang on to it in an interesting way. Let's see if I can actually do it this way. Um, what I want to do is in our initializer here, uh, we wanna loop over all of our endpoints and create a pointer from the endpoint to a NS cache. So I'm gonna create an array here, or a dictionary rather. And I'm gonna go ahead and say this is our cache dictionary and it's going to point to a dictionary where this is a string and this is the value that it points to and by default it's going to be empty because we don't have anything inside of here but we do want to go ahead and instantiate a few caches based on each of the rm endpoints 
And instead of making this a string, we can actually make this an RM endpoint by just going to this enum and also making it hashable. That way we can actually use it as the key in a dictionary. So now what we're going to do is let's go back to the endpoints. We are also going to add onto here case iterable so we can loop over all three of these endpoints. And what I'll go ahead and do here is I'm going to say this is going to be RM endpoints, all cases, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, compact map this. So basically loop over each of the cases and create and return a element that can go inside of here. So we're going to do that, but let me actually do it in a simpler way so it's easier to read. We'll get rid of this cache. In the constructor here, I'm just gonna say set up cache, and we'll be, we'll be simpler about this instead of trying to be fancy with our compact maps. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we are going to loop over each of these. I'll go ahead and say for each, and this is going to be endpoint in. And in our dictionary here, we can now go ahead and just say, that in our dictionary, toss in the endpoint, and we're just going to instantiate a brand new cache object. Cool, so it makes sense. Now this is how our setup is gonna work. Notice this is a private function. Now respectively, we also want functions on here to be able to actually check if something is available in the cache. And the way we're gonna do that is we are going to say public uh, func, and we are going to say, cached response and what we want to do is for endpoint and this endpoint is basically going to be an rm endpoint and then we're also going to say uh, the url which will be our url here and we're going to return data which will be optional like so so now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say that the target cache will be in our cache dictionary where that endpoint exists. Now we do need to unwrap this because we could in fact have you know nothing returned from the dictionary. Let's spell guard correctly. And once we have the target cache, we wanna go ahead and say from the target cache, uh, get the object with a particular key. So this target cache here should be an NS cache. So target cache, and I wanna go ahead and get a particular key. So let's jump into here and you'll notice, let's refresh my own memory as well. You'll notice there's an object for a key and then there's a set object for a key. So what I wanna actually do is say, give me an object for a particular key where the key is a NS string. So we do want to go ahead and convert the URL here to a non-optional. We need to unwrap it, URL is URL. And the way we can get the key is basically by saying the key is URL, the absolute string as NS string. We do need to cast it to a class bound object, a underlying NS string. So we'll go ahead here and say key. And finally, we are going to just return it. So let's compile. Let's see if we have any issues and what the problem is. The problem we have is this returns NS data. So we're gonna say do it as data. Let's go ahead and see what the problem is now. It looks like NS data is optional, so we are gonna go ahead and just put a question mark there because we may or may not have this in our cache, which totally makes sense. All right, cool, so now that we actually do have this written out, we also want a way to add something to the cache. And I'm literally gonna copy and paste this, and I'm gonna go ahead and say um, set cache, and this is gonna be for an endpoint, once again, a URL, it's not gonna return anything, we are gonna do the exact same thing, except this time, instead of returning, here we'll go ahead and say set object, and the object that we wanna go ahead and set is data. And this is going to be for a key, so we have a key here already, so I'll say key. And the data we wanna set, we should pass in. So we have set cache, for endpoints, URL, and then we want the data itself. And data will be of non-optional type data. Here we can say data as NS data. So let's go ahead and build, let's see what happens. We need to get rid of this return nil. And cool, we now have these two APIs in this pretty small object called RM API Cache Manager. Let's actually use it. So back in our service, now what we're gonna do is two things. We wanna use both the uh, get cache and set cache. So here we try to create a URL request from the RM request that is passed in. And if we go into this RM request, 
This actually already encapsulates the endpoint. We have initially privatized it, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop private. And we already have the URL on there as well. So what I'll go ahead and here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if let cached data is going to be our cache manager. And we're gonna say, go ahead and get me cache data for request.endpoint. And this can be request.url. Then what we want to do is we just want to decode this data that we just got back from this uh, this function here to the appropriate expecting type and just stop the execution. That means we don't need to go ahead and make the API call. And we've already actually done this decoding stuff. We do it actually right down here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it. This is going to basically try to decode the type from the data and I'll actually use cached data here. And finally, we return it. So we should see that error go away. Let's see if it actually does go away. Looks like this try can actually throw. So what we want to do is we do want to put this in a do catch block. And if we do fail here, we can just say completion failure with whatever error gets thrown. And respectively, uh, we'll just return here. We'll just stop the execution if something goes wrong. So that looks pretty good. Now let's not forget, we do want to set the cache as well. So let's come down here and in this block, we're going to capture self in a weak capacity. And I am going to go ahead and write up this, this completion handler or maybe even before it's I'll say cache manager. And we want to set cache for our request.endpoint, request.url and the data that we actually got. Alrighty, looking pretty good. And that's actually all we need to do. So to make sure the cache is working, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a print here and say using cached API response. And we're gonna actually see this in action and this is actually going to not only decrease our uh, network usage and bandwidth, but it'll actually make our app faster because we don't need to rely on the internet um, to load stuff over and over again. So no prints yet, makes sense. We are going to click into here and come down here. We shouldn't see anything yet. And I'll move on over in these cells and we shouldn't see anything yet either. But if I go back and then I come into here again, then scroll down, we should see prints. It's to say using cached API response because whatever these view models uh, you know, get triggered, the cell comes into view, it actually goes and says, hey, okay, fetch the content for episodes, right? And we don't want to do that. What we want to actually do is we just want to get that particular episode. So if you recall, when you click on one of these episodes, it'll actually open up the episode details and we're passing in the URL to get an episode detail. Now we are going to simulate basically fetching that URL again in our uh, API, uh, RM API service, but if it's cached, it'll go ahead and get handled. And if it's not cached, it'll also go ahead and make the request. So we have a single API in this RM service that'll handle doing both things for us. And we don't need to spread all this business logic of like, if we have a cache, do this, else do that. So I'm gonna exemplify that very briefly in the uh, episode detail view controller. So inside of here, we passed in the URL and I'm gonna actually go ahead and create a view model out of this. So we hold the URL directly. Instead, what I'm going to do is we're going to eventually want a character detail view view model. And I say eventually, but I might as well just create it now. So let me open up the view model here and we're going to create a new file. It can be, I guess we can just do a class here. So we don't want to inherit from anything, um, but we are going to say RM, um, RM episode detail view view model just like that and that'll go ahead and create the class for us we'll inherit from ns object we're not going to actually want that i'll just delete it but it actually does stub out the class for us which is really really nice now this particularly will take in the url we'll say self.url is url and here we'll just create that url this is going to be the endpoint url let me actually name it something more appropriate so i actually know what url this is um, get into a habit of naming things as best as you can because it will come and bite you in the butt later on. So let's go ahead and do that. And respectively, we'll want to view that this view model will be configuring. So we're going to subclass UI view. This is going to be a episode detail view, just like our character view. Let's go ahead and create it. 
Let's go ahead and finalize this here, and we're going to want a couple base things in here, like overriding the uh, two initializers. Let's go ahead and say unsupported in here. We'll override the other initializers since we're going to do some setup work in here. And I guess we can leave that alone for now, so we're not really focusing on it. And back in our episode detail, instead of holding on to um, this here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to say view model is going to be our detail view view model, like so. And we'll just go ahead and actually create it down here. We're going to say this is going to be a new view model, passing in that URL. And once this view model gets created, what I can actually go ahead and do is I can just kick off a fetch of the episode data. So we're going to say fetch episode data. And the whole reason I'm going through this, well, A, we're going to need it, but more importantly, what I'm going to want to exemplify is the fact that even though that we are dispatching another request with the URL that we are passing in here, we aren't actually hitting the network again. We're going to be actually using our cache. So we'll go ahead and say arm service shared execute this request. We expect to get a episode back. So let me go ahead and do that. RM episode dot self is what I'm looking for. Here we have our callback and inside of here we need to handle it. So particularly uh, switching on the results. I'll print out a string describing the model and in this case we'll just break. So let's see what I screwed up. Certainly screwed up something here. So this thing here is in fact nullable, it looks like. So we are going to unwrap it. And respectively, let's go ahead and give this a run. So when we come into the character detail screen, we have loaded the episode for the first time, the episode data in the cell. Now when I click on it, it's gonna make that call again, but you'll see here that now it's actually using the cached response. So for the duration that your app is running, you're not going to make duplicated outbound API calls. If you want to get even more performant, because we know this data doesn't actually change, as far as I'm aware at least I should say, we could write it to core data, but we're not going to go that crazy. So let me hit this again, and again you'll see a print that we are using our cached API response. So that is all I've got for this video. We've actually made a dramatic improvement to how our API service works. In the next part, what I'm going to actually do is we're going to take a step out of here and we're going to start working on the uh, episode tab over here. And it's actually going to be rather quick because we're going to reuse the episode cell that we already created. And we're going to reuse this grid like uh, layout for our collection view. So uh, thanks for watching. Drop a like before clicking away. Leave a comment. Say hello. Let me know if there's any questions or any issues you had. And I'll see you in the next part.